So now we are going to extend ISLM model. We're going to open the economy, and we're going to uh, and we're going to discuss the ISLM BP model. Okay, we will be going equation by equation. So let's start with IS curve. Equilibrium condition stays the same, but now aggregated expenditures are given by consumption, investment, and spending, which we still assume is exogenous, plus current account. What is it a little bit later? So, consumption stays the same, out, so autonomous consumption, MB, MPC, times disposable income, Disposable income is still Y minus T. Taxes are still investment is minus E times interest rate. The new thing that we've got here is current account. But look, current account uh, for us is going to be simply Exports minus imports. In reality, we should have also here income payments, but let's, for the, uh, to keep the model simple, this is all we need. And look, uh, our current account function, we will rewrite like this. It will be autonomous exports minus marginal propensity to import times income, so what we already had, plus we're going to introduce a new variable into the model, and it's going to be exchange rate. So we will have V times exchange rate. But look, this actually requires from us to define what is exchange rate. And exchange rate is price of one currency expressed in terms of other. Look, we will be denoting exchange rate by E and we will define it in a very specific way. Now, E, in our case, is price of foreign currency expressed in terms of domestic currency. Or, in other simpler words, how many units of domestic currency we must pay for one unit foreign currency. Okay. <laughs> with exchange rate, uh, with exchange rate defined in such a manner, we can now define what, what are, we can define changes in exchange rate. And look, because this is not intuitional at the beginning. If exchange rate goes up, look, this means that now we must pay more units of our currency for one unit of foreign currency. This is what we call depreciation and in this case this is lost 
of the value of domestic currency. On the other hand, if exchange rate, in our case, goes down, this is It means that we need to pay less units of our currency for one unit of the foreign currency. So, uh, domestic currency gains in value. Now, knowing this, we uh, can actually figure out what is the impact of depreciation and appreciation uh, on current account. Uh, so what is, the, what is the sign of parameter V? Okay, and look, let's do it with a very simple example. Let's just say that we've got Poland. Poland, we produce good X. Price of good X Is equal to one's, uh, one's, one's, one PLA. Now, the second country, Germany, produces only good Y, and price of Y is equal to one euro. Let's just say the domestic is Poland, foreign is Germany. Now, Let's assume very unrealistic situation that exchange rate is one PLN, one euro. So we can exchange one zloty for one euro. Now, look, how, uh, so let's now examine how exports work. If you want to export good to Germany, what happens? Person in Germany takes one euro, exchanges it for one zloty, and for this one zloty can purchase one unit of X. Now, then this good goes to Germany. So this is clearly Poland exports. So now, how will imports look like? Person from Poland takes one zloty, exchanges it for one euro, and purchases one unit of Y. Then this unit goes to Poland. So this is clearly imports. Let's see what will happen if uh, currency in our example depreciates. So depreciation well, Okay, give me a second. Uh, so, if currency depreciates, what does it mean? It means that E goes up. So now, for example, we need to pay for uh, two zloty for one euro. Okay, and now let's see how exports will look like. Person from Germany takes one, so here we have depreciation. Person from Germany takes one euro, exchanges it for two zloty, and can buy Then those units of X 
go to Germany. Now, how will imports look like? Person from Poland takes one zloty, exchanges it for half a euro, so 50 cents, and can purchase only Why? So, what is this showing us? Look, if we have depreciation of Polish zloty, then we have bigger uh, Germans have stronger incentive to buy our goods. So our exports should go up. On the other hand, our, uh, our currency, because it's lost value, now uh, for the same amount of currency we can buy less goods, which means we have lower incentive to purchase from Germany. So exports should go up, while imports should go down. Okay. So now let's analyze the opposite situation. So what would happen if uh, so what would happen if we would have uh, appreciation? Appreciation means that E goes down. So now one, uh, so now let's just say that one euro can be purchased for 50 groschen or 0 0.5 of a slot. So what happens now? Let's start with exports. So person from Germany takes one euro, exchanges it for 50 groschen and can buy only half a unit And this half a unit goes to Germany. Now, in case of imports, person from six, one zlot, buys two, uh, two euro, and with two euro buys two units of Y. So, we can see that appreciation uh, should have opposite effect. It should decrease exports because now it is more expensive for the Germans to buy Polish goods and it should increase imports because it's now cheaper for, uh, for, for Poles to buy a, a goods from Germany. So, the conclusion from that is that when the currency depreciates, uh, when the currency depreciates, uh, current account should improve. When the currency uh, depreciate, uh, uh, appreciates, should a current account should worsen. Now, how can we write this uh, mathematically? Well, okay, first, so we've got that when currency uh, depreciates, exports should go up and imports should go down. So, current account being the difference between exports and imports should improve. Now, if currency appreciates, so it gains in value, exports should go down and imports should go up. Current account should worsen. So, remembering that current account is given by x0 plus, I'm sorry, minus m times y plus v e, 
derivative, partial derivative of current account with respect to the uh, exchange rate is equal to V. So, V should be positive because when exchange rate depreciates, current account improves. Okay, and look, basically this is all we need to know to create the new IS function. So again, I'm going to put all of the information from all these equations together. So we've got Y equals to A plus B1 minus T times Y, right? Consumption plus D minus EI investment plus G0 and finally plus current account which is autonomous exports minus N times Y plus V E. So this is the slope of, uh, so this is the IS function. Again, it gives us all the combinations of income and interest rate for which there is an equilibrium in market for goods and services. This time is just augmented to incorporate open economy. Okay, let's do the same thing we always do uh, in such situation. So let's put all the endogenous variables on the left, all the exogenous variables on the right. Look, in our setting, we will have three endogenous variables now. Income, interest rate, and exchange rate. Okay, so collecting all expressions with income, one, two, three, moving them to the left, we get that this is one minus B times one minus T plus M Y. Now, collecting all expressions with I, we just get one plus E I, and all expressions with exchange rate, this is it. Sorry, minus V E and all exogenous terms A plus D plus G0 plus X0. They all stay uh, they all stay over here. Now the question is now what is the slope of IS? Look, with three endogenous variables we could draw three-dimensional graph. But this is not very convenient and this is not how we do it use it in economics we will again just draw this function in the uh, in the uh, income interest rate space so all we have to do is to calculate differential with respect to two endogenous variables income and interest rate so We differentiate this with respect to y. This is derivative of y. Times dy. Only this expression has interest rate. So we get e times di. Because this is derivative of i. The rest is treated as constant. So we get that this is equal to 0. Again, I'm going to move this to the other hand side of the equation. Now, I divide both sides by dy, both sides by e, and I'm getting the derivative that is giving us the slope of is, which is equal to 1 minus b, 1 minus t plus m divided by e. We know that this is between 0 and 1. This is positive minus up front. Again, we see that even in the open economy, the slope of, the slope of is remains unchanged. Okay, now, let me, I'm sorry, let me check the time. We cannot go over uh, we cannot go over three minutes here. So, uh, next thing we're going to calculate is the slope of LM. So, 
the slope of Lm uh, is going to be uh, exactly the same. Look. Now let's move to Lm curve. Lm curve actually it's not going to change at all. So we still have money demand given by k uh, times y minus l times i because this is domestic uh, 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 domestic market then we have money supply uh, which is given uh, which where in which we have exogenously given money supply and then we have the money demand equals money supply we collect those together to get lm which is equal to k y minus l i equals to m zero again to find the slope of lm all we've got to do is to calculate differential with respect to income and interest rate so we get that this is k d y minus l d i equals to zero I move this to the other hand side of the equation. And we get the di dy is equal to k over l, which is positive. And as you will learn a little bit later, the slope of lm again will play a crucial role uh, in the outcomes we are going to obtain within this model. Okay, actually, as our time uh, times uh, goes uh, above 20 minutes, let's make a stop in here, and in the next part, we are going to develop BP curve. Okay, thank you.